So um, we have three items for closed session language on here. Uh, agenda item D3, uh, which is the location of CRI's coal company. Uh, D4, uh, which is the request for proposals on North Adams, which we discussed last time, providing an update. And D8, which is um, the Shower and Schumacher planning option. Um, if you want um, to discuss all three of those at once and kind of knock them out over in closed session, you can do that. Or if you want to take them one at a time, do that as well. I guess it's a pleasure to share and handle it. I personally would do all of them. I would also like to do them all at one time. Okay. Um, so my only concern is that I have, I can't be here. I don't know how long it's going to take you all three. I, I, I do have to weigh in on this item three. Oh, we'll start with that. So we'll start with that one. With that one first. So I don't know. There's um, Attorney Chavez put together a closed session script, unless you want to talk about anything beforehand. If somebody wants to do it on the right hand column for discussing two or more items. Correct? Okay. All right. So, so we need a motion. Right? Yep. Move into closed session. Yes, just got it. I'll move yeah. that we move into closed session. Could you include the to discuss no, agenda item three, four, and eight under D. That's great. And is there someone seconding them? Second. Then I'll second. Okay. okay. So the motion is second. Uh, roll call, please. No, no. Oh, then Can I have to read Reading this first. Right? Reading yeah, first. first. Reading first. first. The authority may convene in closed session to discuss agendums items three, four, and eight. 
pursuant to sections. Okay, thank you. 1E. 1E. Oh, okay, I could go back here and look at that. Okay. For purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing in public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining users. The authority will then may thereafter oops, will then stay in closed session, mm -hmm. right? Um, to discuss agenda item four. Per, oh, this is kind Sorry, of hard. Three, four, and eight. Oh, just say three, four, and eight. Then I have to keep reading this all over again. Okay. Um, pursuant to sections 19.851, um, the, the, the authority may thereafter be convened in open session pursuant to section 19.852, Wisconsin st statutes to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. You know, we have to do a roll call vote. All right. Gary Delvaux? Yes. Person Barbara Dorr? Yes. Debbie Dean? Yes. Jim Bloomer? Yes. Kathy Hankos? Yes. Okay. Sorry, folks. Be leaving. So what happened to the notebook? Wait, we have to go into open session first. Oh, right. Motion to open session. Second. Okay. Motion to be right here. Open session. Almost Aye. Aye. We don't need to do a roll call to go back to open session, do we? Uh, yeah, once here, roll call. Uh, members Carrie Dalton, Matt Schuler's here, Jim Here, Sorry. Okay. Okay. Three items before we were discussed, and there's no action taken in the closed session, and we are going to go to item 8 right away in open session. And item 8 is consideration of possible action request of the Green Bay Fair Company to grant an additional three month planning option to show and Schumacher building. Um, first of all, uh, I need a motion to open the meeting. Motion open the floor. Yep. Yes. And second by Debbie. All in favor single saying aye. Aye. Okay, we are in open session. So if the representative from the theater company would like yes. to speak. Yes. I would. <coughs> or would you, would you prefer that we go to the, if you want Kevin to talk about the report we got from the other side? Kevin Oh, Kevin King. Oh, Kevin King. Kevin. Which goes Yes. First? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, just hang on one second. Yep. Kevin King, could, could, could you give us a little background on this? I'm just going to talk about the, the building report that came back. Yes. Ken, you want to do that? So, uh, while this warms up, um, we hired uh, Werner Schober Architects to do uh, an analysis uh, and design, preliminary design to fix the roof on this building. Yep. Because we know it's failing. Um, so they uh, did a study over the last few months and came back with a report and uh, we met with them. <coughs> we met with them uh, to discuss the report and that was included in your packet. I don't know if yep. you had a chance to, to yep. see yep. it all. Um, yep. uh, I was hoping we could get the uh, Technology up, but if you look at the drawings, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, if you look at those. So, in the report, they, they talk about the structure of the roof uh, on the top of the roof is uh, the framing plan. Uh, since the building is uh, there's three bays there's the west bay, the central bay, and the east bay. And the west and, and central bay have been somewhat structurally compromised. Um, and the building is starting to deflect inward. So wow. um, what they're recommending is that we put in a post and beam system on the top level all the way across to support that roof and bring it back up to square and, and be able to support that road. On the East Bay, um, that building generally is, in, 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 is supporting the roof uh, on two thirds of the building, but on the north side where the structure was damaged by previous owners, there is no capacity there, and that would have to be rebuilt. All right, so that would be that would require a couple of beams going in that section of, of the building. Um, the second floor is 
basically in its current condition, and this is all depending on the wood being number one Douglas fir that was built out of it. We have to test that, that would be another cost. But the condition of the second floor currently is that it could support uh, 15 pounds a square foot uh, per, of dead load and a live load of 40 pounds per square foot, and possibly a, a, a light office a live load of 50 pounds per square foot in its current condition. If you wanted to go to higher higher use and, and make an office, you have to put in beams on that that level as well. So Can we go back to the Douglas fir part. Yes. So why did it have? I read that and I was why does it have to be Douglas fir? Because it's structurally a very sound uh, oh, wood. Okay. So if it was built out of Douglas fir number one grade, then it has structural components even at its age that it's this stronger piece of piece I of timber. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, here we are. Um, so uh, next slide, please, Kim. Okay. Uh, uh, go up to the second floor, please. Yeah. Okay. So the second floor, uh, we're talking about. Uh, let's see if this works here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So we got uh, beams here to support a heavier load. Structure. If we get 80 pounds per square foot, we'd have to put beams in there. This uh, section, the East Bay section, which is this section up here, the top section, um, that would, if you're going to put in uh, uh, commercial structures or commercial, if you're planning for commercial, you're going to have to put a beam all the way across north and south of that building, plus additional support, cross beam support on that north end. And the floor plan, please. This is a uh, basically a concept plan. Again, this uh, to go further, we'd have to buy engineering and, and, and detailed design plans. But the footing, you can see the footing structure is preliminary throughout the building. And this is just to support the roof in its current condition, yeah. what they're doing. They haven't done any studies on the soils underneath the building to determine the size of the footings and how much they'd have to open up the first floor. The first floor is basically fairly sound, all right, but fairly sound for commercial load. All right, for assemblage, it's much more detailed. You'd have to put in a lot more work to do that. So the footings basically would have to be put in um, in the basement of the building. So you'd have to open up the first floor, put the footings in, then put posts in, put beams across. So it'd be a very expensive project, basically just to support the roof. And that's as is designed. Now, we don't know what the end use is, but if we were to just say, we got to support this roof or we're going to lose this building, this would be what we would be looking at. And that estimated cost? Estimated is? cost, they would not give us an estimated cost, but <laughs> when uh, when I uh, pinched them a little bit on it, they were like, you'd be spending in the range of two hundred to 500000 to fix that roof, as is preliminary or designed. Just the roof. To With get it to commercial. That would be to get it. With the beamings. Yes. With, With all that everything. Stuff. Yes. Okay. yes. With the first floor post. Post going right through the first floor. Okay. So which is which is the least expensive way? It sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> but I'd say to fix that compared to not having those posts impeding any type of right. If, if you, you wanted to have like an open area yeah. without the posts that you're talking if about, you had, uh, uh, if you had a, a specific end use that specified exactly what open. they wanted to do, you'd have to design it differently. Okay. All right, but you're still okay. going to have to put footings in the building. You're still going to have to probably. Put, uh, you know, put footings around the perimeter of the building depending on how big a steel you want to put inside that building. You know, so it's, it's a huge project. So it's a huge project. Mm -hmm. All right. And just to be structurally safe, that the minimum that, that we could do is a two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Right. For a commercial and rating. And perhaps, you know, once we get the engineering in, they could just look at the north end of the building since that's the most compromised structure. But I think they're really they're, they're really going to recommend that you put the beams all the way down the two center, uh, or the west and the center structure because of the deflection in the building. So I'm doing what, what happens if it's not dug for? Pardon me? What happens if it's not dug for? Uh, well, then the, the size of the steel goes up. So the 200 goes to 300 or 400. Perhaps. Right. Hence the range problem. Yeah, the range is. <laughs> If it's dug for it, might be cheaper. If it's not dug for it, you're going to put bigger steel. Either way, I think you're putting steel in. Yeah. It's a big space. 
And anything we would do would be a commercial way. Yes. I mean, that's a given. And we would right. do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else on the report? Feel comfortable with the, what they provided you. They're yes, good, sir. They're good folks. Yeah, I, I'm very comfortable with what, they're, what they provided. So then the RDA are granted a three month extension to the Google company, which expires at the end of March 31st, I believe, the option. Mm -hmm. um, and they are here today that you'd like to request an extension? Yes. Yes, so. thank you. Okay, please. Yep, thank you. So good afternoon, RDA members and others. Um, Dennis Gullickson, I'm the president of the Green Bay Theater Company, and here to speak to you regarding our request for an additional extension on our planning option on the Shower and Schumacher buildings. I'll keep this brief as we presented our rationale for an extension back on December 11th when it was originally granted. Most of all, I want to address why we were back here asking for an additional extension rather than telling you that we've completed our capital campaign. <clears throat> Uh, on December 11th, we had a detailed strategic plan in place to conduct a capital campaign between that date and the expiration of our, our extension uh, with the goal of funding the renovation of these buildings into the Arts and Performance Center that we had proposed there. What we did not have on December 11th, of course, was the knowledge of the Bernard Schober and Associates um, analysis of the buildings, uh, specifically the structure at 227 East Walnut and um, a report we did not also know that there was a report forthcoming uh, based on that analysis in fact we learned of that analysis and the pending report on friday december 20th just prior to the holidays and just as we were set to uh, kick off our capital campaign now clearly such a report would contain vital information for both assessing whether we could proceed with our proposal as well as issues might be unveiled that would affect our capital campaign's bottom line. While waiting for the report, we did hold initial meetings with potential lead donors. We also secured the services of Donald Salman and Maria Zarin of the Winston Group to help us conduct a capital campaign. Don has also uh, had preliminary contacts with potential lead donors interested in putting their name on a downtown arts and performance center. However, we're essentially in a holding pattern pending the receipt of the Bernard Schober information. Now, as many of you know, Mr. Salman is a wise, well-versed, and well-respected champion of capital campaigns for dozens of causes in our area. Going into the capital campaign, Don advised us that some of the first questions we would be asked by potential donors would be, how much are you looking for, and is this project going to happen? Now certainly the questions raised by the Werner Schober analysis and the pending report were such that we could not sit down with the donor, look them in the eye in good faith, and fully answer either of those questions. We finally obtained the narrative of the Werner Schober report on Friday, February 22nd. It was well past the two-thirds mark of our original extension. <clears throat> we first saw the actual remediation plans of that building this past weekend as we downloaded this meeting's materials. Now clearly, we have not had time to consider these plans in detail with our architectural team. We do believe that we can work with the proposed remediation uh, as, as Kevin went through it. We've made some preliminary, preliminary determinations in that regard. So we come before you today to ask that you extend our planning options so that we can incorporate those structural remediations into our final plans for this facility and into our overall capital campaign. In fact, we're anxious, very anxious to get started on it. We remain strongly interested in the buildings. We've met with Mayor Schmidt, Alderman Scannell, and the Chief of Staff Jeffries to express our continued desire to see this project through at the Shower and Schumacher buildings even with this new information in mind. Now, I believe that we enjoy the support both for our proposed facility and for the time needed for us to move forward from those three individuals. With their support in mind, I would also be so bold as to ask for greater lines of communication going forward with the city's economic development department and with this group. As Wendy said at a meeting in early January, we're all on the same team. It is clear that these buildings, particularly 227 East Walnut, are in need of plenty of TLC. We want to provide them with that. We're also willing to do the hard work of seeking the monies necessary to do that. And 
as I said, we we're actually anxious to finally get started. It seems entirely likely that we are the only group other than the city that remains interested in them. And then given the structural remediation required, their su suitability for other purposes may be further limited. We began this project with a starting hypothesis, hypothesis which has been strengthened and enhanced as we brought it to the community. Along the way, we've used a proactive problem-solving pro approach at each hurdle. This juncture is no different. Seen to fruition, the facility we pr uh, propose will become a shining star in downtown's offerings. With the recent opening of the Hotel Northland, we perceive our position just a few steps down Adams Street is crucial, providing guests there and other visitors to the downtown area with entertainment as well as other forms of engagement. Nearby businesses will also benefit directly as we've already talked to several of them. <clears throat> so, beyond an additional extension, we're asking all elements of city government to full, finally and fully embrace the proposed facility as an important amenity growing downtown and our group as a team that can get this done with these things in place. We look forward to establishing a clear pathway with the city to see this project completed. Our board vice president, Michael O'Malley, and our lead developer, Paul Belschner, would also like to briefly uh, address this group. And I thank you. Briefly, the keyword there. Please. Go ahead. Um, I just uh, to this in front of me for a second. This is not the shower and Schumacher, but the Victrobel. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's just a, a render that we had completed about five okay. years ago regarding the streets. Of the Vic Theater. So good afternoon, oh. RDA. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this project. Uh, this opportunity makes it a historic day for our company, as well as a historic day for the development of arts and culture in downtown Green Bay. For the first time in a century, there are multiple venues that are artistically focused in downtown Green Bay that promote the performance of arts and culture. In 1901, the Victrola was completed, and by 1919, downtown Green Bay had over eight performance venues. Today, on March 12, 2019, is a historic day because we are able to bring to light a facility promoting the community's growth and economic development through arts and culture. Thanks to a team of artistic and talented people such as David Cook, Professor of Theater Studies at UWGB, Dennis Gullickson, published novel novelist, playwright, and educator, and to Logan Sprangers, a digital artist raised in West Appear, graduate of UWGB, who brought Victrola and the Shower and Schumacher <coughs> to life with the potential artistic growth that this corner of Walnut and Adams has. Today, uh, we have with us uh, 33 signatures of local artists gathered in only the past month, that pay taxes and bills on the art that they make. These signatures represent their belief that an arts facility with affordable studio and rehearsal space would benefit their business. In other words, these 33 are only scratching the surface to what this city has to offer, and who this city has offered such great talents, such as Michael Matstor, a famous editor who has worked on Fight Club, Little Rascals, and worked with another Green Bay native on Monk, award-winning actor and platinum donor of the Meyer Theater, Tony Shalhoub. Mr. Matzdorf has given us the endorsement of his for the promotion of an arts facility for the public. These 33, however, were gathered from one group in the course of three weeks so that today's representation can make it a historic occasion. So that the redevelopment and city staff of Green Bay could know that this community of teachers, students, entrepreneurs, professionals in theater, dance, music, visual arts, and digital arts needs a home. A professional environment where the doors are open for all groups to collaborate and create a greater artistic experience for the community of our goers. Affordable space for artistic groups with rooms that are catered to the artistic need. Musicians will have space to develop writing, recording, and performing. Thespians will have workshop space and rehearsal space, creating greater use of their time spent in local venues. Dance groups that promote diversity and opportunity for low to mid-income families will have an affordable and safe environment. Painters, photographers, 
Filmmakers will have studios for themselves to focus on their creations, as well as space for retail if other galleries, such as the Art Garage Gallery, soon to open, and the Whitney Park Developments, soon to open, have run out of room with their art displays. And the world of digital art will allow all of these to create promotions for upcoming events. This, in turn, will increase the entertainment dollar shared by all groups that are currently working tirelessly to survive in Green Bay, not to mention the impact on local amenities that the flow of traffic would create. This concept is portable. Uh, we moved it from Victrola to the Minahan, uh, and similar facilities are already pushing arts and culture forward in other American cities. 227 East Walnut and 109 are strategic and key locations for the arts and culture in downtown Green Bay, Having the stage door of the mire within view is like putting a football field for the community to run around on just across Ridge Street from the historic Lambeau Field. However, with the current benefits of a low overhead, a recent report may raise our campaign to a level where another location would be as financially accessible and within the ability of our campaign. Whatever the cost or relationship with the city, Establishing an arts facility is key to a successful campaign. This facility produces artists who support new venues <coughs> currently rising for performance and products, creating a space for the artistic community to practice and participate is a natural reaction to the growth of our beautiful city. Key partnerships estab established between our company in regards to an arts facility are most notably Paul Belchner, who is involved with key developments of the Green Bay metropolitan area. He has been detrimental in securing the necessary momentum for this artistic facility. Mr. Belchner has developed a similar incubator across the river with a focus on technological development and retaining that talent in that field. Aj Gullickson, our account accountant, has developed a working operational budget that allows affordability and diversity in pricing. Brad Kropp and Josh Smits have worked on architectural development and design of this space. I hope this gives you the essence of some of the work done to date on the functionality of an artistic facility by our company. Okay. Each meeting has led to a step <laughs> forward with this project, and today's meeting is no different. We have adapted and ascertained developments for this arts facility and look forward to future partnerships after today. Five years of molding this concept and assembling a strong team that would be able to tackle this project has led us to this group. Today we represent over 30 local Green Bay artistic companies that have signed letters of intent for this facility. Our mindset is to better arts and cultural experiences for all citizens of Green Bay and the metropolitan area. By helping the artists afford promotions of events, we offer a greater cultural <coughs> experience in Green Bay which will benefit all venues. Thank you for allowing us to present this project. Thank you to the developers and entrepreneurs who have made their artistic impact on Green Bay throughout the years. And thank you all for your time today and for the ability to make this day a historic one and a leap forward with the redevelopment of arts and culture in Green Bay. Thank you. All right. Paul, short. The detrimental guy. Yeah, the detrimental guy. <laughs> so I want to talk about timing. This is the right group for this project the more we learn about this facility the more of a liability it is we sat with Wendy and Kevin and, and nobody could answer who or what would go in this facility given the constraints that are there with the federal monies taken and the windows that can't be put in upstairs if you look at a residential opportunity so if this group is still willing to increase their funding goals I don't like missing dates I think Dennis did a nice job of explaining what happened with the last 90 days it was just waiting on that Werner Schober report, and uh, the results weren't good. So I'll, I'll continue to commit my time to this group because I see the passion and, and the legwork that they're doing, but I have a hard time defining a timeline for what could be done. We do know that this is a, a dead issue without land control. They, they're willing to go and keep asking for funding through the Winston Group, but you can't ask for funding without land control. Thank okay. you. Questions? Uh, no discussion for the I have some questions. Um, Good. I'm looking at your picture there, mm -hmm. but that, but we know that that can't be done, right? Because mm -hmm. of the historic um, nature of the building, the facade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. I just wanted to 
Okay, so we, we're not going to do that. Yep. Um, so I, I heard a lot of talk about um, this, the individual artist space. Have you taken out the component for performance? Yes. Because of having to put the, the roof and the support beams? Yes. So then, okay, so then the, the stage area, that would probably be gone and we'd be looking really more like spaces for individual artists. We would um, probably have a, a smaller performance venue um, okay. elsewhere in the facility, so work probably within 109. Those and uh, but the other thing that we've looked at uh, uh, on the heels of, of eliminating the theater is of course we have other performance spaces downtown mm -hmm. we have the backstage uh, just you know across the street and down a bit uh, the library certainly has a performance space as does the museum so i think um, you know we've looked at those as extensions of the facility where we could do larger performance okay at least for the time being and have you i, I know um I've done my fair share of fundraising. I've actually worked with Don Solomon. He is very, very good at that. Um, but have you raised any money at all? Some starting seed monies. Uh, okay. And, and we've identified uh, additional seed monies. Uh, in fact, Michael and I met with Don and Maria on mm -hmm. Friday again to kind of talk about this meeting and um, you know our need to perhaps adjust or not. Um, going forward, so right. we're, so we, we've identified uh, sixty thousand dollars of seed monies. Uh, right. Don will be approaching someone who understands going in that seed monies don't always come back, uh, mm -hmm. um, depending right. on the larger capital campaign. Um, we certainly intend for that to, to work out. Um, so he has some people in mind who would be willing to take that risk, given right. given you know the, the presentation of the facility. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, Kevin, how do we, we're going to be on those hookers to earn $500,000 to, to renovate this building, make it safe from a commercial perspective. So, how do we get our money back out of that? How do we get our money back out of it? Yes. Well, a, a, a project has to come along that's willing to spend the money, basically, uh, to, to provide the build out and the, and the structure to pay some tax dollars downtown. Okay. So this particular RFP does not do that, does it? The arts? Right. Folks, I have no idea. I have no idea what uh, what their business plan is. Where's Paul? So Paul, <coughs> so we're going to have to spend $200,000 or $500,000 to make this thing commercial viable. So are you guys going to participate in, uh, in developing that thousand dollars? That's what I was saying. It's that they're going to raise their fundraising goal to make up for the flaws of the building that were identified additionally in the last 90 days. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm involved is so that it would be a taxable facility. I don't think, you know, I think we talked about this in you know, one of the last couple of RDA presentations. I, I don't know that this group at the end of the day provides the highest and best assessed value on the facility right as a group including the city staff we can't identify who would go in this building given we sat and challenged each other you, you can't do resident we, we've been down this path right. with right. residential right. upstairs you can't put windows in the building it, we were going to park on the you can't you just can't do a lot of things that was at a two million dollar project this is years ago and the numbers didn't pencil out at two million dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, I just believe that it's the best approach to, to attempt to, to get the flaws of the building covered through a capital campaign. Okay. They have to consider whether they just want to go to a different facility. Mm -hmm. there's the, the questions are right. legitimate. It's a, it's a huge yeah. liability. Kevin continues to uncover that. Mm -hmm. right. Concern, and I'm speaking as a person who's 
oversees the Public Arts Commission of <laughs> this project, right? I think mm -hmm. lots more arts downtown. Um, I think, but my, my loyalty for the RDA is with the building itself. Right. My concern is that we let this go another year and we don't fix that roof. Can we there's an unsuccessful campaign here, which I wish there wouldn't be, but now we lose the building because we lost the roof. Right. Um, but I guess that's my concern with the building. And holding that, depending on how long of an extension they're looking for on an option, you know, that always puts us further on in the year. Right. So I guess. Well, I is there someone else that's going to fix the roof if they don't? I mean, or we just try to find someone else? Someone to else? Find really? Really? I think we would go out again to try to find someone else. Or we would try to come up internally with dollars if it's more block grant or it. something to get the roof done. Right. You know, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's still stabilizer. not developed, but at least the roof has is in a place where it's in mm -hmm. good condition. It's stable. It's stabilized. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that would be the minimum we should do. Right, right, right. And right now, with uh, the commitment to the <coughs> arts group, which again, mm -hmm. think the arts are fabulous. We can't show it, correct? Right, but there, if it's under it's option, it's under option to the end of March. So mm -hmm. we don't we can't speak to developers for them to right put it out there. But well, personally, I. Uh, so then, yeah, right. So I mean, the bottom line is, right, and I do, I, I do love this project. I mean, I, I realize, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, know, I realize, I like, a cluster development around the arts, you know, and mm -hmm. downtown, you know, my son is involved in the arts. I just, you know, I realize that, you know, and I go to, I go to cities all the time to see him, and there's always a lot of venues that are near each other. There's a walkability factor. There's mm -hmm. all of that to that. But there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to even raise the money to stabilize the building in the time that it needs to be done. That's one of the things. And, and we have to look out for this historical building. Two, you did say your concept is portable, right? And is this the best place for you to be? I mean, I, I realize it does have the classroom and all of that, but if you can't raise enough money to cover all of the stuff that needs to be done with this building and then make a perform, perform of that works, you know, to be able to incur all the costs that are necessary for, it, for you to do that. And I realize a lot of people in the capital campaign are just going to give their money, right? They're just, mm -hmm. It's just going to be a gift. You know, I realize that. But I think we're taking an awful chance of not making sure that that building stays viable at this point. And we do have other properties like the or garage or, I mean, there are there are other there are other places where you may be able to make this vision happen than this. I hate to lose for it downtown less money. for a lot less money. I hate to lose it downtown, but I don't want to. I don't want to set up both parties for failure. And that so seems how, kind how of like this is like a non non win situation. Either way, you know. Might I ask how quickly Kevin or Ken perceive needing to? you know, move on these repairs? Well, uh, if I may interject, we've only known about these repairs for about two Oh, no, I understand that. Mm -hmm. The yeah, campaign that. that we've set no, no, up in no, no, the No, no, I understand so all of that. That's, that's I, I don't think that, I don't, I, that's kind of apples <coughs> and oranges right now, I think, what we're talking about. And we got it, yes. we got it to you as soon as right. we got uh, What we're so talking you know, about is, is saving right. an historic right. building. Oh. Right. The extension would be to see if we can raise the proper amount uh, and keep it an affordable space for artists. Excuse me. Well, and one of the the last time um, all of you were here, you talked about starting your capital campaign, and you were going to come back with an update on that. And as far as the funds that you had been able to raise thus far, um, you know, before we, we continued with an extension on it, so we were kind of looking for some. In the game, I think. Well, it, it, so it, I mean, we didn't explain that well, but uh, without you know this information sure. presented here today, it was really difficult to you know to know exactly what we're shooting for in terms. Right, of but you were going to launch that capital campaign. I thought, like within a couple of weeks after our last rollout event plan for January fourth, I had contacted mm -hmm. um, community resources. Uh, the chamber was ready to go. The Green Bay Visitor and Convention Bureau, the Greater Green Bay uh, Community Foundation, um, 
downtown Green Bay Inc. Jeff uh, have been notified. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're ready to roll out a press release and many of the stakeholders were committed to coming to the event so that we could draw attention and kick it off in that fashion on Friday, January 4th. Uh, obviously, you know, between December 11th when we were granted the extension and January 4th, uh, and I had to then recontact all these parties and tell them this was postponed. Um, uh, they, uh, development department and city were uncomfortable with us utilizing the facility for tours. We've scaled that back and talked about simply holding a smaller event at 109 North Adams. Uh, there were concerns about insurance, but, it, but, but we would have carried our own event, event insurance. So the strategic plan really began from that date as a kickoff and um, you know we had plotted up until uh, the expiration of the, of the, the extension uh, our contacts and did make some of those contacts and made some contacts I'd say that are probably capable of covering what we have projected as our total uh, objective. You know, I, I think my focus is on the building right now. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time getting by two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. How and when do we know what that amount is going to be? Well, I mean, it affects yeah. us and it could potentially affect them, obviously. The next step would be authorization to spend funds to do the engineering and actual design as is pr proposed there. And that's Could without we do a range of estimates if we wanted to open it up more and Pardon? have less steel structures, vertical steel structures. Well, I think the cost would go up because you would be well, putting sure it would big, go up. bigger steel in there. So would no, it would affect your engineering <laughs> estimate substantially be by looking at all the options. Um, I haven't asked that question as far as the cost of this yet. I haven't gotten to that stage yet. We're waiting to see what happened here if, if this group is coming up with some funds. So we would have we, to pay for an engineering report. We would have and then to we'd go up for bid to see what those costs right. would be. We, they would come up with bid documents and, and exact engineering. For that. This is in place engineering costs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How much money did we put in the building just to? Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. My mind says forty-six thousand dollars or something on that. Seventy for the heating. Seventy for the heating. Right. Yeah. And we did some patching on the roof too. And if we're going to fix it, we need to know that now because we have to bond for it, right? Or or do we have money? Or how how do how um, we we're we're know, money? We probably consider potentially block grant. Or okay. We okay. we have some money okay. Okay. in a preservation okay. fund, but it's only going to cover about a third, or not even a third, probably a fourth of this, you know, depending on what the final design is. We still don't know what the final use is. Yeah. You know. But if, okay, so we're not going to if, if they don't get it. Let's just say that is. Mm -hmm. We still don't know what the final use is. Right. Right. I mean, right. our, our right. goal would be to preserve the roof. Just that, right. that would be it. And how much is that? Just two hundred to five. That's two hundred to five. That's, 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 that's the roof. Just the roof. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought that was the. I thought that was every. Well, that's that would be. Well, but that was what you need to support the roof. Support the roof. So half a million. Right. It's always the higher number. Well, if you support the if you support the floors, it might be the five total. First floor and the second floor. If you do some additional work on those, then it might be closer to five hundred thousand. So one way or the other, don't we have to get an engineering estimate? Yes. I mean, regardless of what else we are going to do, that's correct. We can take action on that today. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have we have approximately eighty thousand in a preservation fund for this building. That we have that would pay for the engineering. Funds. That would easily pay for the engineering. Probably a reaction to get this get a good number and, and then proceed from there. Right, so they have one less than a month left on their option, right? March thirty uh, first. March thirty first. Um, I don't think we should extend the option until we have better numbers on, on the, what's going to cost to fix that building. Jim, you need the that's, that's where I'm at. I think we need to know from the engineering estimate mm -hmm. the range of costs depending mm -hmm. upon how we want to support that structure. Because then we just end up extending it again. Because then we get the engineering right. report. Mm -hmm. And then there'd be more money. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like it's working out real well for that building. 
And that's been a long road already. Yes, it has. Is yep. this the third or fourth? I know. So I'll entertain a motion accordingly. Um, I'd authorize staff to go out for an engineering estimate on um, supporting the roof structure. Do you I'll second that. that. Um, so if you are holding, or, or we have to do the other thing first, don't we? You would be holding the um, whether or not to grant an additional three month hiring option until you receive um, engineering work, which authorizes you to send staff to do that. But are we going to get that before the end of March? Mm -hmm. No. No. No, you are not. You know, I don't know how busy they are. Right. Um, we could. I couldn't. Right. I wouldn't expect guess. that we would, and it yeah. ends at the end of March. Right. So, mm -hmm. effectively, by doing that, then we are saying no extension. So, is that what we really have to vote on first? Yeah. Whether or not we're going to extend this. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Turning number five. <laughs> so, I entertain a motion in regard to whether or not we're extending the option. Well, based on the what you submitted in the engineering report, I'll make a motion that we do not extend it and that we need to uh, go with the engineering. Second. 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 Just can. Motion in the county is seconded by Jim. I enter what comments or questions. And the we shall vote. Two. I see. You thought you were right. Yeah, the way it was worded. Right. I've heard the way it was worded. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I've heard the way it was worded in the. In the I understand. It does No, we all we all were in agreement. Yeah. We all are in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Just like what is the way it was worded. You can either note on the record. Um, well, it depends on actually how many rules which would prohibit you from breaking your vote. So, especially if it's a little narrow, then that's fine. Does it turn this back on? Is it important to worry about the family? Is it important to worry about the family? Is it intent that was the motion? Yes. That is the motion to state it. At least a read back the motion. Yeah, um, we are all in agreement, no question about that. I was just going by whether or not to approve the three month option that my vote was not. So that's, that's why I voted that way. But 
the bad news. If you're yeah, gonna, there it she can, yes. can she change the vote on the civic clerk? We could. The only thing I would say is that as a caveat is in the future, if you make an error in your voting, do it before the item, we move on to the item, or the people have left this way. It's, it's not a surprise when they see something slightly different. Um, I'm okay with it because we're doing it on the record, and you are noting that uh, your intent was not yes. to go through what you did. Okay, move on. Number, I'm sorry about that. Okay, number five, consideration of possible action authorized staff to proceed with obtaining bids for the repairs needed at the KMA Convention Center in Skywalk. All right, since we want to spend money on repairs of buildings we own, let's start with Let's that. just do it. So we, we actually have experienced uh, a few problems with the Skywalk area. So we own the Skywalk. Yep. It's attached um, to the Hyatt. So you can see on those pictures here, there's some tuck pointing that needs to be done on the columns that support the skywalk. Um, and there's also on the far right, there's some um, coping stones that are lifted up that need to be sealed as well. Mm -hmm. And then, next slide, Ken. That, that's like the skywalk. So when we actually start to look at repairs of the skywalk, we're like, this is the entry into our convention center, yes. which is yes. wonderful, yes. right? So pretty. <laughs> so um, we had, if you look on um, the lower right, you'll see the red flooring. We had to rip up some of that in order for the doors to open because of that leakage on the top. Um, and of course, the windows um, are they're clouded, and there's actually one that's broken out. And if you just look at the whole thing, flooring, painting, just sprucing the whole thing up. The cosmetics is not the priority right now. What we're looking to do is tuck pointing, uh, coping stones, um, and then those windows replacement. So what I'm looking for is approval to um, proceed with obtaining bids for the repairs needed on the coping stones, the columns, and the windows right now. Motion to approve. Second. In motion by Jim and second by Alder Um Any other questions or comments? I just point 1.6 million is in that plan. Oh, okay. Could there be signage added? I, I went there this weekend and yes. I haven't been in there in years and it was like, where am I? Yes. I mean, even yes. a welcome to and you're, yes, this yes. is the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. That's all that would things. be really helpful. Oh, good. Yep. Oh, first time cheese on the place. So what? Right. right. The cheese. First time on that. Sorry. I thought that was a new no, sorry. Number six, consideration of possible action requests for the farmery whose community block and grant funds to purchase sculpture which is placed at 815 Street. Yes, hi everybody. Uh, we have a request from the farmery uh, of $7,500 of our community development block grant public art funds. Uh, for a public art sculpture. And if you recall back to our 2018 action plan, we were running that for our community development block grant allotment. We set aside $50,000 for public art, specifically public art in residential uh, neighborhoods that are classified by HUD as low to moderate income. So what we have here is a proposal from the farmery and request um, to core funds to support a public sculpture that is a collaboration uh, with the Navarino Neighborhood as a support from the Navarino Neighborhood Association. Uh, and then also uh, residents uh, from, or leaders from the Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council. Um, this project here, as you see, is a life-size sculpture of lettuce greens. It's gonna be kind of three-dimensional <laughs> with the root structure. Uh, 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 well. That it was pretty flowers. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, and it, uh, it, it's really unique in that it's a, a life-size and interactive, so it'll allow passers-by to explore it, walk through it, uh, and it will be located in front of the farmery, which is located right in the heart of a residential mm -hmm. neighborhood, the Navarino uh, neighborhood. And another uh, uh, factor that plays into this, which I find uh, interesting, is that the project itself is rooted, uh, or stems oh, from, from <laughs> 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 uh, a, uh, you so this, this project was developed by a group of uh, residents uh, who went to a community leadership institute. Mm -hmm. Now the Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council sends mm -hmm. up to four of its neighborhood association residents to a national leadership conference. And so aside from the four days of leadership development training, 
the team that goes to represent Green Bay is tasked to develop a project that will impact our own community here. Uh, and this is where it came from. Uh, this is how that, that came to be. And we have here with us a representative from the farmery. So I, if you have any questions about this project or uh, would like to know a little bit more about proposal, aside from what's in the packet here, we can open up the floor. Um, otherwise, we at staff here really uh, uh, support this project uh, and the impact it's going to have in the neighborhood there. I think it's how much is that? I think it's fabulous. Like 50,000. 50, but we do have, so Laura Schley, our public arts coordinator, and myself are, are working on a, we have a couple projects right now uh, in the kitty that will be using um, the rest of those funds. Okay. And this is an annual refunding of this? It's a, Black Grant funds are annual. No, no. But will you annually be refunding this? Mm -hmm. Why would you be refunding this particular mm -hmm. Public oh, that sculpture just, just one time. time. Just, just, one time. time. just one time. One time. The goal is one time. One time. Yep. This will not yep. happen again. Because it was in our action okay. plan. It, if, if we put it in our action plan. That's what I'm plan. asking. Yes. Will, will, they, will you continually be refunding? Our proposal. Right, we're going to propose to put public art dollars in our block grant yeah. next year as well. Okay. Good. So hopefully we that more. I, uh, I would that. certainly support it. It goes back about six years that I took my staff there on a team building exercise day and it certainly didn't look like that building does in the rendering mm -hmm. and we helped it to clear out and toss junk and, <laughs> but we, we gave it a good start that day mm -hmm. so I, I i would make a motion to approve second, second. So you can have it uh, yeah. motion, <laughs> motion by jim second by denny any other questions or comments if not we shall vote Number seven, consideration of possible action in short field for 227 South Buchanan Street, that's Um Yeah, the impact, uh, uh, to us is going up. Uh, this pro uh, this uh, deal that you approved last uh, at our last meeting fell apart. Um, oh. the, the buyer didn't want to wait uh, till the end of February, so they walked. Um, so uh, we have a new offer on the table now, and uh, the impact to us uh, is 97.68.12 rather than 97.00. So, so we will not get as much back, but they are willing to pay down their bill uh, $24,052.80. Can you remember so we receive $24,052.80? Correct. It's all black, right? Home so it's, not, it's like nothing. It's a short sale. Well, it's not nothing. It does get recycled, you know, uh, back oh, into it, other loan programs. Right. Other it's loans. recycled back in the program, but it, um, it happens. Right. Right. I don't know if the mm -hmm. offers are going to go up. Mm -hmm. on yeah. We're worried that they might go down. Correct. Right. Correct. So I'm concerned to approve this. So you guys are recommending. We're approved. recommending that you take it. Oh, most people are in the hand. Second. Second. Second by Kathy. Uh, any questions or comments? All right, let's we'll vote. Show me the So, yeah. one quick question before we move on. Well, just yes, please. Should uh, we vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I just didn't move. I should. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it has nothing to do with voting. If, if CDBG funds get recycled twice through a home program, are they then defederalized? That's a I question for that, Krista, but I think, I think that's true. I think that's true. I think I heard Krista say that. Like I think it's twice. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's twice. Yep. And that's the... I'm, I'm then they become unrestricted. Then they become an unrestricted value. Right. Right. Not very yet. Right. right. You can give it to somebody yeah. over 80. Right. doesn't right. matter which type mm -hmm. of project they use yep. it in. I yep. believe that's correct. Me too. Okay, informational uh, directors report and project updates. Jeff said here's a week from Tesla. Can I have a report to check out? Yes, I, I, I look at that. Next meeting, April 9th, 1 30. A letter to the Cabinet of Discussion for a candidate to adjourn. So moved. Jim and Kathy, all the favorites are going to say goodnight. Aye. Aye.
We are adjourned. Thank you for letting me know about three years. On May 11th, I, we will be out of the country. On May 11th. I know, I just want to give you a oh, okay. notice. Okay. We can use the date or